Okay, we're going to have our first speaker of the night. And it's Bilal Ali, and he will be talking about hackerspaces, American re-education, and the importance of making things. Woohoo! Good idea. Just talk about it. All right. So this is a story all about how my. Bismillah. So when I was a kid, I always dreamt that I'd grow up to be an inventor. And when I learned about DNA, I actually taped kefir to my wounds because I thought I could be able to get the sequence for pangs. And although it didn't work. Um, that's the playful, playful curiosity, that experimentation that I really look for in people. Recently, I did a documentary tour of North America, finding places called hackerspaces, makerspaces, er spaces, places where people got together, shared knowledge, shared resources, and built the future they want to see. And these are really passionate people where if they were going to jump off the building and wanted to have a fat suit expand really quickly before they hit the ground and survive, they build it. And I want to let you guys know that these places aren't new. They have history and they have a lasting legacy that's really important. This guy over here is Benjamin Franklin. Uh, he started. Uh, Benjamin. Oh, Benjamin. Oh, Benjamin. Oh, Benjamin. Oh, Benjamin. Benjamin is a man. He came back in 1727 and he started this thing called the Ubuntu, where an eclectic group of people would hang out together talking about uh, diverse issues from. Diverse issues from. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, philosophy to travels and other things of that nature. They sprung forth from them public libraries, uh, you know, public libraries, uh, fire, volunteer fire departments, and the University of Philadelphia. And what happens when you get a diverse group of people together? This, my friends, is a synthesizer Tyrannosaurus Rex. I found it in Montreal during my travels. And it's the importance of making things. I called the, the project the Two Hands Project, oh, Two Hands Project, All Hands Active, Hands on Museum, because you have to experiment with your hands to learn and discover. And these places are popping up all over the country, and I think that they're very important. Benjamin Franklin quite very well agrees. And Benjamin Franklin's day, he had to share with essays and with books and libraries. Nowadays, when we solve problems like this RFID entrance system that I found in Toronto, we can put up open source documentation online for people to be able to build and solve their own issues themselves. So it spreads forth and multiplies. And these places are popping up in the worst neighborhoods in the country, where people are really oppressed or depressed, and they're having um, issues with their everyday lives. One of the important things that the Huntu had was that it um, was for the betterment of themselves along with their communities. This guy over here is kind of like Benjamin Franklin, where he went overseas, and he saw hackerspaces. And what he did was he invited his friends to come with him next time. His name is Nick Farr. And when he came back into America, these people started spreading hackerspaces all over. They got caught with the bug. And what would happen if we had one million Huntus all over the country? How many public libraries would we have? And <laughs> uh, how many fire stations and um, the, the American Philosophic Society? What would happen if you got people passionate about learning together with people passionate about teaching? Like, Dude, oh my god, check out how molecules work. I'm going to make this poster. I'm going to advertise it like it's a concert. It's like science is now a cultural activity, and it's happening at these places all over the country. And one of the important things you have to understand about Benjamin Franklin is that this quote could have come from anybody in the Linux world. Um, he really valued open uh, and sharing innovation. As we learn from others, we have to share and uh, um, teach uh, ourselves. And he invented the government, right? He invented the glass harmonica. He made lots of things. And when you open source knowledge, what can happen? This, my friends, is teleportation. This guy in Germany designed a whistle. And within four hours, it existed all over the country because these people in New York invented this in their hackerspace. People say hackerspaces build toys. This is a $900 rapid prototyper that anyone can build. This is in Richmond, Virginia. This guy is building something where if he wanted to send his grandma a cup, he could send her a digital file and she could drink out of the cup that he designed. I think that's really important to understand. Um, so Make Divide Industries popped out of a hackerspace in New York called NYC Resistor, and it's employing six people that live in New York City. Oh my god, you can actually do that with stuff that you can build in a hackerspace? And so this is just an example of something that you can do in a hackerspace uh, that has a lasting impact. And what would happen if Detroit had that innovative culture? What, what could you do if Detroit was finally able to get out of the automobile and hop into a cupcake? <laughs>
So what we need to do is to gather together, build the future that we want to see. Um, I'm going to have you close your eyes in a second and imagine something. We need to reunite all the different organizations that have the same similar goals of sharing and innovation and have them communicate with each other through the means that we have. So close your eyes. Imagine a place where anybody can get together from any background, talk with each other, discuss a future they want to see, and build it together. And there's one thing that can connect anybody like this, and it's, um, uh, open your eyes, Pi. Pi is the one thing that can unite us all. What I would like you to do is meet me at the AHA shop, which is the Hacker Space in Michigan, um, on 722 on this Wednesday. And anybody that's in the Hacker Space, please stand up and shake hands with the people right next to you. Thank <laughs> you.